Hey, go over here. 1.4 is fast approaching and 3 DPS await for us on the limited banners. None of that sustained business here. Will you choose Zila, the crazy self buffing single target beast that has held her position as a top DPS for several patches? Jin Liu, the crazy but in a psychological way, destruction DPS that looks to trade ally HP for massive turns of AoE burst damage? Or Topaz, the follow up sub DPS with a crazy cute trotter by her side? Let me know below, but I'll be going through their pros and cons from what we've seen and what we know to determine who might be the better pick for your account. Of course, choose who you want in the end, but I like discussing these things. I'll have guides as well for them when they release, so subscribe if you want to see them when they drop. Anyway, let's begin. Jing Liu will be the first banner of 1.4. She's an ice destruction unit and our first of this combo. Destruction units are supposed to be destructive DPS with a setback. Blade consumes his HP, Daniel consumes your SP, and Jing Liu consumes your money, and also your ally's health. Jing Liu's kit identity is about accumulating Zesergy stacks, and when she reaches two of them, she will immediately be advanced forward as per the livestream and highlights page. It will then make her skill AoE, and much stronger, make it cost no skill points, as well as make her consume ally HP for every attack she does. The siphoned HP will boost her own attack on top, so rather than being a consistently high DPS like Blade or Daniel, Jing Liu will have to get to this special state, but will probably deal devastating and high damage to those two for this set amount of time. Another slave to the best unit in the game, Bronya, it seems. The fact she doesn't consume skill points in her special state means she'll be paired with SP neutral or efficient DPS. This will definitely bring rise to what I hope for, which is two strong DPS in a team. You can't pair two SP heavy cap carries like Zila and Daniel, because then you'll have no skill usage. But you can pair two SP neutral or barely negative ones with some SP generators, some which could also buff two allies, and then you'll have a very scary team. Consuming ally HP too is interesting, it's an AoE version of Blade, but it won't affect herself. This will definitely bring new potential when more Blade type units come out, and I think the two of them together will perform insanely well. Consuming ally HP on each empowered attack means theoretically, you could reliably proc Blade's high damaging and healing talent every time she goes into this form. There's also the possibility of running DPS with Longevous Disciple and having Jing Liu in this team, but the crit rate isn't worth that much stat value if you can't also use the HP and you'd have to find another SP neutral or efficient DPS. The damage Blade can output by himself should be much higher than the boosted damage from a second Harmony. So I think a Harmony or Nahezia like Pella, Jing Liu, Blade and a Luwatcha or Fushuan will be very very powerful. There's a problem of Blade getting too low, but with all those extra counters he should heal up quite well. Taking hits will always give him stacks, but those hits will be hitting harder than Jing Liu's HP Siphon which looks to be about 4-5% of max HP. If you want a powerful DPS, especially AoE, she'll be a great pull. If you also have Blade and want your Blade team to go even further beyond, she's even better. I think we have Blade's Exodia team forming. She basically already should do amazing DPS in this state, but she also enables Blade to do talents, effectively increasing his DPS whilst being a main DPS of her own. If you have Bronya, she should do excellent and there's a reason why Bronya was shown so much in this livestream. Herta is great for AoE ice damage already, but Jing Liu will destroy her in this regard as we've seen with limited DPS. But Herta can still do fine of course, I used her in PvP against MOC 10 just fine. If you don't have strong sustain options, she might be a bit annoying to use and even ruin your team survivability. We will have to see if the weakest sustains can use her as well. If you already have many limited DPS, you can use them to brute force content pretty well. It might change in the future, but a lot of DPS came out and performed very nicely. If you think she's hot, you can pull her too of course, and if you like her kit, go ahead, it looks super fun. Topaz and Zila are next and will come out on the second half of 1.4. They are both Hunt, Zila being Quantum and Topaz being Fire, and she'll be our first Fire Hunt unit. Hunt has a problem, already, about being single target. Yan Ching can sure do a ton of damage to a unit when he's all stacked up. Getting to the boss versus a wave of 5 enemies is a tough task for Yan Ching alone. Zila ignores this problem completely with her resurgence. If you have enough damage, AoE waves are nothing to her. So first let's see if Topaz still holds the same problem. Well first I will say she has Nami, and Nami is the cutest thing ever, and I will pull for Nami, and I will do anything for Nami, and I love Nami, and I wish I had the funds to E6 Nami. Nami is who I consider Star Wars Goba. In both games we have a fire sub DPS that summons a cute animal. Nami isn't interested in missing torches with his fiery breath, but instead smacks enemies with cool moves and can even turn into a tornado. Well, Tornado sounds like Pyronado, so I'm satisfied there. Topaz is a sub DPS from what we can tell. She enables follow up units kind of like Kafka enables darts. 
but whereas Kafka seems heavy on the main DPS aspect and enables dots on top, Topaz looks more like she will complement follow-up carries as her ultimate rather than damaging all enemies will just buff Nami. And Topaz still is fully single target. From the stream, her basic attack is a single target and will count as a follow-up. Her skill is the same and her ultimate will buff Nami who is single target. All these follow-ups including ally ones will push forward Nami, but only if it hits an enemy with proof of debt, which is debuff that Topaz applies. It applies a vulnerability debuff on an enemy and makes Nami focus on said target. This vulnerability debuff looks strong at 25% which might not even be max level, which means every follow-up will do 1.25 times damage when not counting other vulnerabilities. Her skill can redirect this so you can make sure the boss specifically feels the pain. Since she is single target, she may provide a nice roll to AoE follow-up units, giving them more damage on a boss unit as well as her own damage, basically compensating for their weaker single target damage. Single target follow-up units are a bit weird since if they don't hit proof of that, Nummy won't move up outside of his own base speed. AoE ones or ones you can make sure will hit the enemy you want, like Kafka, will always hit the proof of dead enemy and make Nummy jump in the action order. This means she is a bit clunky to use. If you have a Clara, she will definitely enjoy Topaz, but if she doesn't counter the enemy with proof, then Nummy is just going to be bing chilling at a low base speed. Of course she has her AoE counters though. Jing Liu can be pulled as a main DPS as well as a blade enabler on top. Topaz I don't think will be main DPS worthy compared to Jing Liu, but she can probably be played as one just fine and still clear our current content. Just like you can form a Blade Exodia team, I think Clara especially will want Topaz in her best team. A vulnerability debuff is immense and not only does she buff Clara's damage, she buffs her own damage as well as hopefully bringing a lot of solo damage. Her damage beating Clara's boosted damage with the second harmony should be easy and then you have her debuffs on top. If you want to enable pretty much any follow up unit, then Topaz and Nami should be an awesome pull. If you don't have units like King Yuan and Clara, maybe wait for a rerun. I will be pulling either way, but luckily I have both these units. King Yuan might not even be able to use her that well as he follow ups once per millennia and really likes his two comfort harmonies, rather than Clara that can counter a lot. Finally, we have Zila. Everyone knows she's a crazy DPS. She deals high single target damage and can activate extra turns upon killing enemies. This means if you have high enough investment, Zila can double her predicted damage. Her base multiplies aren't anything special, but it's the self buffs she has on top of this resurgence that make her so deadly. A 25% speed buff, an 80% damage buff, an action advancement on basics, and 20% resistance penetration, whilst also having the best DPS reddick set in the game that ignores defense, I mean she really has it all. Oh and she also has one of the highest base tech values in the game, and the highest speed value. Oh and they release Silver Wolf too, a unit that gives her even more resistance reduction and defense reduction which increases the damage dealt the more you stack it. Zila's time to shine was 1.0, and she's still shone in 1.1, and 1.2, and of course 1.3, and she can shine even further because of her kit being overloaded, but also because of Silver Wolf. They enable quantum weakness on any enemy in a full quantum team, or any mix of teammates, provided the enemy is already weak to your other unit's elements. 1.3 brought a quantum sustain, and now all that waits is a quantum harmony for her Exodia team. If you want a fun and powerful DPS that we know is meta, then Zila is an excellent choice. The fact Silver Wolf exists means she has a bit of staying power too. In AoE she is still not as strong as the Destruction Beasts, but that single target damage as well as the ability to clear the waves and enable her to get to the boss, unlike other hunt units, means she does so well even in 1.3. I am wary that DPS may get stronger and stronger by big steps, and Zila may eventually be power crept a bunch by 2.0, but as long as she can clear content, which she can do very easily, then I think we're fine. And Hoyu always has their ways of buffing older units anyway. So let me know which of these units you're pulling, and for Green Event, well, she'll be a cool Kafka support with a pretty strong sounding kit. So if you want to pull for her for Kafka, why not? But be careful for the 5 star. I will be pulling for Topaz and Nami, and I can't wait. Thanks to all my amazing members. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.